This is the second video in the uh, playlist for Windows 11 and TPM 2.0. Well, it's the second one as far as you know. <laughs> Today's July 5th. On July 1st, I made the first video, the second video, the third video, and fourth video. I've been sitting on them. I don't like two, three, and four. I, those are on the cutting room floor now. You're not ever going to see them. Believe me, you would thank me for that if you did see them. So I'm going to take another crack at consolidating all three of those in this one video. And let's start right out with coming right off the bat with what I think is really going on with Microsoft and, and Windows 11 here. What is the hit, hidden agenda that that is really motivating the way that Microsoft is handling this? And I got to tell you right off the bat, I think 10 years down the road, um, we're going to look back and have a pretty good view that that we can understand why it came out this way. What is the biggest pain that we have these days with in, in the over worldwide computing environment? What is the biggest pain that we have, the biggest threat that we have? It's obviously ransomware. Ransomware is currently in the hands of the financially motivated criminals. They encrypt our drives of, of organizations and they want money for it. And that's going to continue growing. Everybody can see that it's very hard to fight it. We need better tools for fighting it. And that's what I think is underlying this Windows 11 and, and TPM 2.0. And I'm going to show you some content that substantiates this more than me just saying it, because some of you are just going to nod your heads. Yeah, yeah, right. What's new? And but even what what's worse than that is what happens when in not it's not so much ransomware, but the, the the software behind that that does the drive encryption. What happens when that gets in the hand of hands of terrorists in the hands of criminals? It's just about money in the hands of terrorists. It's going to be far worse. And we're going to wish we could go back to the days where it was just uh, internet criminals that were encrypting our drives and just wanting money for it. Those were the those were the the nice days. <laughs> I'm saying that's the way we're going to look back on it when it gets in the hands of terrorists. If we don't prevent that from happening and and I think Windows 11 and TPM 2.0 is a piece of the puzzle to get us to the state to where we can really get a handle on this stuff. So if Microsoft had just come right out with that, so we want to do Windows 11 and everybody's required to have TPM 2.0 in order to handle this, it would have been a, a large scale revolt because every time that they tried to enforce that they tried to enforce security on us and safety on us, we resist, we resist it. When I was a kid, we had cars that didn't have seat belts. And then they started pushing seat belts and we resisted it. We didn't want it. I remember people specifically saying, I like to feel free in my car. It was about freedom to not wear safety belts. And still today, I still see signs occasionally on the freeway, click it or ticket. So there's still people resisting that being confined and abiding by the rules. I don't think any rational person could insist that seat belts haven't reduced injuries in, in accidents. Well, there's all kinds of it, it, the uh, TSA at, at the airlines to improve security. Yeah, it's, it's a pain. So if Microsoft was up front about what TPM 2.0 is going to mean for us and what improved security is going to mean for us, We'd be resisting it really hard, I think. And I'm going to show you some things about that here. So, but I, I've, I've, got to, I've got to fall on the side of what I think is Microsoft's motivation and their orbital view of computing security and where it's headed. If we don't get a handle on it, we've got to get a handle on it. And I think that's what really is behind this. And that's also why... Windows 11, it's just Windows 10 with a pretty face, right? A lot of criticism has been that it's not that big of a change. Well, I like that it's not that big of a change because a bigger change causes more problems, more things that, that don't work right. But I think it's just a, a pretty change to try to 
soften the blow. Putting lipstick on a pig is completely appropriate saying for this. But I think the real motivation is to create a cutoff point where we can say we know that all the Windows 11 computers have TPM 2.0 and therefore down the road Microsoft can do updates that take more advantage of what TPM 2.0 can do. It's not just drive encryption. That's just a piece of it. Uh, and I think the real objective is to, is to clamp down on ransomware and it won't be the total solution. It's like without TPM 2.0, what I have learned about it causes me to think it's similar to us living in how homes that don't have locks on the doors and getting to TPM 2.0 lets us have a lock on our front door. Now, does putting a lock on the front door make, prevent us from being um, burglarized? No, it doesn't. Bur burglars can still get in to my house and steal things. Does that mean I'm going to leave my door unlocked? No. <laughs> okay. And maybe this is more like without TPM 2.0, it's more like living in caves that don't have doors. And now TPM 2.0 is giving us doors and locks. It, it, it could be that substantial. So to give you an orientation to this, instead of me just t talking about my impression having with, with the research that I've done on this, I want to take you to where does this uh, TPM uh, come from? It, it comes from this organization, Trusted Computing Group. They've been working on this for a long time and it's got to do with a lot more than just uh, computers. So this is their website, trustedcomputinggroup.org. I see I'm, their I'm on their resources page. Let's actually get to the home page. You can see what that looks like. So it, it, it's easy to go browsing around here and become familiarized with who they are and what they're doing. And as a matter of fact, let me show you something else here. If I just do a Google search on uh, Trusted Computing Group, I'm going to take out the .org so it doesn't go to their website. And I want to go to this piece here. Here's what Google has seen fit to, to say about them. They're giving us uh, this uh, Wikipedia as one of the elements here. I'm going to right click on that and open in a new tab. So there's a lot of content you can read here, but I just want to go with this, this much right up here, these two paragraphs. It's a group formed in 2003 as a successor to Trusted Computing Platform Alliance, which previously formed in 1999, to implement trusted computing concepts across personal computers. Members include, and it's a lot more than just those right now. Um, the point there is that this has been going for a long time. This uh, TPM, there's a long history behind it, and it's been with us for quite a while. It just has, hasn't been able to be implemented very significantly because not enough computers have it. The core idea of trusted computing is to give hardware manufacturers control over what software does and does not run on a system by refusing to run unsigned software. So some of the some of the ransomware infections can change the boot files of a computer uh, and, and implement root kits. And the TPM is going, in part, can prevent that type of infection. So there's a lot of types of infections that TPM can, uh, can thwart. And it can also be a piece of the puzzle to thwarting other types of infections compromises. It, uh, it's not going to fix everything, but you need to have a door on the front of your house, okay? It needs to have a lock on it. There, uh, security is a multi-layered um, endeavor. So let's go back to, let's see, their website. Uh, a piece that I found interesting was over here on the About menu, and then click on About TCG and then scroll down. There's these documents here that I, that I found interesting and gives more of a historical perspective and background. Articles of incorporation, bylaws, membership agreement, fact sheet, backgrounder and timeline 
I'm going to give a, click, a quick preview of Backgrounder and Timeline. When you click on those, downloads as a PDF file. So this is the Backgrounder. This Backgrounder was, was drafted, I suppose, or written, I suppose, in 2006. Gives, infer, get, gives kind of the, the background or the, the setting for this effort uh, happening. And it, it talks about business governments, academic institutions becoming increasingly interconnected through wired and wireless. So and a lot of how we're connecting together gives us a lot of advantages, right? A lot of extra capabilities, but it gives us more exposures, risk. Uh, physical theft part of it, so drive encryption, that's certainly going to be a piece for physical theft. That's If you have a laptop, drive encrypted. The bad guys get hold of your laptop. They can't log into it. They take the drive out, connect it to another computer. They can't access it. So so that's a drive encryption is a good thing there. Now, in the last video that I did, I, I mentioned how I, I didn't want to do drive encryption because what happens if my client's computer is not bootable. I can take the drive out and access the files. Well, some of you pat yourself on the back if you objected to that. If you said, wait a minute, that, that's, that's a flaw in strategy. My clients and the computers that I, that I manage and oversee, we have backups. So that's not going to be an issue. I'm not going to be trying to get to those files but a private individual comes to me, their computer won't boot, they haven't been doing the backups, and that's a problem. Yeah, but everybody's got to get on the bandwagon with having your data files, your important content backed up so that if your computer is unable to boot, you can still get to your content, the stuff that you care about. So then let's come back to here further. Um, Standards-based security solutions, so that's a piece of TPM 2.0. TPM 2.0 has been in most new computers since 2019. Uh, some of the computers prior to that had it. Uh, TPM 1.2 was started long before that, but still, it was never the case where most of the computers out there have TPM. Well, the current standard for TPM is 2.0, much more capabilities than 1.2. So Microsoft, I think, is taking this opportunity to enforce TPM 2.0 because it just gives such a massive extra capability for securing our computers. Now, as they implement more of, more of that security, we're going to have more pain points as end users in the sense that <laughs> every time you 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 give more security, you enforce more security, you're giving up some freedom, you're giving up some privacy. Okay, that is a piece of it. How long are you willing to be at risk for ransomware? And then when ransomware gets in the hands of the terrorist, how are you going to feel about that down the road? So there's a whole bunch of stuff here formed in 2003 for this challenge. And this goes down for the threat of software attack. Vulnerabilities reported. This this chart is 2002. So this this backgrounder is not very well up to date. This chart is way higher than that now. Uh, incidents reported, uh, but this gives you a, this document gives you a historical background and perspective of this organization. So let's get out of that one. Let's go look at this other one. TCG timeline. Uh, similarly, uh, it, it starts in 2003, 2004, and year by year gives more information about the progress that they've that they've been making. So this is not a new thing that Microsoft is just coming out of the blue with for TPM 2.0. It's been around a long time. Now we still need to get to what is TPM. So the best explanation I found it, I haven't found anything from recent. Recent YouTube videos, recent articles, a lot of stuff coming out is that TPM 2.0 is required for Bitdefender drive encryption. It's a lot more than that. And the best explanation I found is these two videos <laughs> from 2019. And they're both by this same presenter, um, Lawrence Van, uh, Lowell Vanderpool. The, the YouTube channel is Tech Savvy Productions. 
So this video is from May 30th of 2019. The other video I'm going to give you a preview of is from June 1st, 2019. So they're both a little more than two years old. So I'm going to hit the, the letter L on my keyboard. I'm not going to play the video, obviously, but I'm just going to hit the letter L to give you some a little preview of this. Advanced Windows 10 with TPM, Trusted Platform Module, cornerstone of Windows 10 security. Okay, so these videos were, are presenting TPM in the context of Windows 10. It has, when Windows 11 came along and, and we found out that it requires TPM 2.0, a lot of people, including me, said, what's that? It's been around a long time. It's not on people's radar. It's critically important to improve our security. Pressing the letter L on my keyboard goes for advances 30 seconds each time I press it. So Lowell Vanderpool has a really pleasant presentation and explains technical things in, a, in pretty good common language. You gotta be a little bit of a technical person, but, but pretty darn good. So then moving along, Windows 10 security is critical, and obviously you mean Windows 11 too. Boot kits, root kits, keystone, har keystroke harvesting, uh, fileless, malicious code, ransomware, credential siphon, uh, advancing, advancing, advancing. Then here's a, a, a chart of cost of cybercrime. Ransomware is way down here in 2019. These, well, actually, these are showing 27, 2018. I think now that ransomware is probably at the top of the list. Um, I didn't go look up a chart for it because it's just pretty obvious. The ransomware criminals have gotten far more aggressive in the amount of money that they're collecting than they were back then. Advancing, advancing, uh, most of what is covered here includes, what is TPM? So here is an actual TPM module. Now this is just a little tiny, little tiny thing. Uh, but it, it plugs into a motherboard in this case. So here's here's another example of a TPM module on a motherboard. So this is a physical chip. TPM is also available in a firmware and, and sort of software environment. It's a secure crypto processor generating, storing, limiting the use of cryptographic keys. This is a key point. So when the ransomware, what they do is they encrypt your drive. That involves cryptographic keys. But look at this, this can limit the use of cryptographic keys. Now I think that there's plenty of computers out there that have been infected with ransomware that have TPM 2.0. However, I suspect, and we're not given the details about this yet, but I suspect Windows has not been able to implement the best uses of TPM 2.0 because not all the computers have it. They can't enforce higher levels of protection if all the computers don't have it. But if all of the Windows 11 computers can reliably have TPM 2.0, then Microsoft and other software vendors, other security products can start implementing and making available higher levels of protection. So this thing that it can limit cryptographic keys, I think is a significant point. TPMs include multiple physical security mecha mechanisms to make it tamper resistant. Traditionally, TPMs have been discrete chips soldered to, to a computer's motherboard. 2.0 allows new implementations, integrated TPMs, TPM functionality built into the chipset. So we know now that TPM 2.0 is built into some CPUs and some chipsets. Firmware TPM, so that's the software only solutions that run in the CPU's trusted execution environment. So we've heard this about software TPM. My understanding is that just is, that's firmware. Firmware is software that is actually installed on a chip on the computer. TPM allows for ter, uh, virtual TPM. TPM 2.0 allows for virtual TPM, which would mean TPM when you don't actually have a chip. So letter L, advancing, advancing. Uh, there's another example of a chip, of a TPM chip under Ryzen. Random number generator, generation of cryptographic keys, secure storage, cryptographic hash, remote att attestation. Remote attestation <laughs> is over the internet, I, I think, other devices being able to attest to the 
cryptographic hash on a, on a computer as being valid, or maybe my computer being able to reach out and confirm that what is what it's booting up with is um, accurate or correct, uncompromised. So advancing, let's see, there's another, there's another example of a TPM chip. Um, that one would go into a socket, it looks like. Cryptographic processor, key generator, hash generator. There's all this, all this stuff that TPM does. And it's not just about drive encryption, but it's about when you're starting up the computer to ensure that the computer's boot mechanisms um, ha have not been violated or altered. Trusted Computing Group uh, going for member companies. Um, well, I, I guess I advanced past member companies there. I'll get to that in another place. There's a lot of them. Root of trust. For, so th there's a lot of these flow charts in here that that gives more information about TPM and how it operates, how it protects your computer when your computer's booting up. But if Microsoft and other software vendors cannot implement all of the capabilities unless all the computers have it. And with Windows 11, they will. Uh, so let's see, BIOS hashes loader config before handoff. Start BIOS, initialize hardware loader. All, all of this stuff is happening. Loading, the kernel loading is, the TPM is all part of it. It's measuring the boot chain. So that terminology comes up a few places through here. So you ought to go watch the video. It is really good for helping to get a handle on understanding this. TPMs are tamper resistant. Um, Multi-level hardware security designed to defend against microprobe attacks, timing attacks, emission attacks, faults, invalid command attacks, power cycling, clock glitches. So a lot of these type of attacks aren't going to happen to an individual or small business computer, but more likely at a higher level uh, computer that could affect our infrastructure. Uh, another example of a chip, uh, uh, PTT is another acronym, acronym that is used, uh, Platform Trust Technology, which is Intel's name for the same functionality. Uh, so more examples of that Ryzen. Okay, here this FTPM, software-based TPM, has been, it is running on millions of mobile devices. Look, some of these cell phones are pretty old looking, right? Well, we saw that this organization started in 1999 and then the new name in, what was it, 2004, I think. So this has been around a long time for mobile phones. If we get our computers using the same kind of security that phones have, that's gotta be a good thing. Two-factor authentication services. Now, here's where we get into the seatbelt objection. No, I don't want that. I don't want two-factor authentication. People are going to be resisting this piece. So if Microsoft came right out that TPM 2.0 is going to make it easier to enforce multi-factor authentication, there's going to be some resistance to that. Virtual TPM here, um, Amazon is cloud security, so Amazon Web Services using that. Uh, here's showing the differences between the versions of 2.0 and, and 1.2. Um, TPM and, and privacy. Uh, so is this would this give us more privacy from like Google and from Microsoft? Yeah, I don't know if that's going to be a piece of it. But here, this is significant. TPM was developed for. Are you expecting Windows to be the answer? No. TPM was developed for routers, aerospace, storage, switches, VPN, computers. Oh, Windows is part of that. And drive encryption is a piece of that. Servers, IoT devices, automotive, your cars, computer controls in cars. They need to be protected against being compromised, right? That's TPM. Mobile, mobile platforms, smart buildings, medical devices. If TPM is protecting these critically important devices, doesn't it make sense that we adopt that for protecting our computers? Uh, this is just showing one of the places where you can confirm that you have TPM 2.0 as a module. 
Security Cornerstone, feel free to contact. Okay, so this was Tech Savvy Productions. Do a search for this, this video. I'll put a link in the description as well. Now let's go on to a second video. Same presenter, same pleasant presentation style. Now this, this video is titled TPM Trusted Platform Module and Windows 10. Keep in mind this these videos were made before Windows 11 was a was a, a glint in anybody's eye. Windows plus TPM cornerstone of security um, platform crypto provider with TPM improved security in Windows. Windows hello. Okay, I think some people are going to say, oh, TPM is Windows hello. I don't really like that. Strong two-factor authentications for PC and mobile devices. Yeah, I don't like that. Um, so I think if Microsoft came out right off front that we want Windows 11 because we can create more better security and enforcing two-factor authentication, uh, that's not gonna sell, rel sell very well. Root of trust for measurement, BIOS option ROM. ROM. I think we looked at that piece earlier. So BitLocker here, BitLocker is one of these things. So platform crypto provider, Windows Hello, replaces passwords with strong two-factor authentication on PCs and mobile devices. I think when we really get a grip on Windows Hello, we may find that it's really not as inconvenient as we think because the reason why we think it's inconvenient is because it's more of a nuisance than having the same password on all of your accounts. But if you were using good, strong, unique passwords on all of your accounts, I think you'll find that Windows Hello is far more convenient than doing all of that. Some significant more things that are said here uh, along that lines. Measured boot, a way for the operating system to record the chain of measurements of software components and configuration information in the TPM through initialization of Windows operating system. So as your computer starts up, it can prevent the bad guys from compromising your computer at that point, if that's the type of infection they've chosen to use. So basically it's gonna make that type of infection useless on Windows 11 computers. The people who are still holding on to their Windows 10 computers and Windows 7 computers are still going to be uh, susceptible to that. And if those computers are connected to networks that have Windows 11, then those computers can be the gateway, the doorway to the bad guys getting to the Windows 11 computers. Because moving across a network, once you get into a vulnerable machine, there are ways to move through a network and access Windows 11 computers. So those older computers, there's got to be better security implement implementations on them because they are oftentimes the source of the attacks that we're getting these days. Virtual smart card health att attestation. Somehow I enjoy that word even though I still can't say it quite right. Uh, more stuff here about TPM 1.2 and 2.0. Some good charts here. Uh, Windows Hello replaces passwords with strong two-factor authentication. And then there's a piece here they come up with. Um, now these numbers are kind of old. They're worse today. New type of user credential that is tied to a device and uses biometric or PIN. And the user never types their password. The user never changes their password. That's what this is going towards. That kind of sounds attractive, doesn't it? If you never have to type in those crazy, complicated passwords, you never have to change them. And then this one down here that you can't see, I'm going to try to expose that here. Um, let's see, I got to mute that so it doesn't go over. I think this scrolls all oh there the user does not know their password i have that implemented in some of my client offices where the end user doesn't even know their email password doesn't know their microsoft password they just know the password that they they need to log on to their computer and then the computer has remembered those passwords 
But this TPM 2.0 gives us the capability to evolve to a level of security where users never type their passwords, never change their passwords, don't even need to know their passwords. And that is something that TPM 2.0 gives us the capability of. Not right away. We need to have a massive quantity. All of the Windows 11 computers have to have that. And then Microsoft can start enforcing higher levels of security that would include that. Uh, cloud only, Azure Directory, uh, getting rid of the password. Hello Pin is better than a password. Um, I think probably I don't need to go through a whole lot more of this. Just punching through quicker to see if it reminds me of something else because I think I've really made the point. There it talks about BitLocker encryption and then here measured boot. So he gives, he gives great explanations of all this stuff. Highly recommend it. And it was baffling to me that I had to scroll through the search results for what is TPM 2.0. I had to scroll through the YouTube videos to find this, which is over the, over more than two years old. It's it, it, it's significant. So bottom line, Windows 11 comes along. We're shown this glitchy stuff. There's a leaked ver a leaked version of it. We question ourselves, why are they calling it Windows 11? I thought it was just going to be Windows 10 would be the last version. And then we say that well, Windows 11 is just it's just a feature update to Windows 10. It, it's not all that big of a deal. So we have complaints that it's not that big of a jump. And then we have complaints that it, it is a big jump in the sense that a lot of computers can't upgrade to it. Well, they can't upgrade to it because Microsoft is arbitrarily, we're told, or some people complain, arbitrarily requiring TPM 2.0. There is nothing... There is nothing what, what, what native to Windows 11 that requires TPM 2.0. It's a choice by Microsoft to include TPM 2.0. Why are they making that choice? I'm saying they're making that choice because it's what they see at their orbital view of the world's computing. It's the only way they see to put a door on the front of the home or put a lock on the door, whatever analogy works for you. We are not, we don't even have the capability of securing our home. If we put the front door on the house or put a lock on the front door with TPM 2.0, is that gonna prevent a motivated burglar from getting in the house and stealing our stuff? No, it's not. Do you really wanna leave the front door unlocked, however? This is a major step forward to have TPM 2.0. So Microsoft has to be sitting, I think, for them in a, a war room or on a retreat saying, how do we get all of the computers to have TPM 2.0? They've been in new computers for a long time, but there's a lot of older computers out there. How do we, and if we were to, if we were to say that everybody needs TPM 2.0 and would stay at Windows 10, how do we know which computers have it and which don't? When can we install the security updates that really, really take advantage of TPM 2.0? Well, we need a really clear uh, mark for that. And the answer is Windows 11. Okay, so Microsoft executives are saying, okay, so let's come up with Windows 11 and force TPM 2.0. How are we going to get people to want it? They're just going to resist it. We've got to do something to make it look attractive. So they come up with all these all this pretty stuff. And so some, some changes to kind of create a little bit of a user envy so that if one person in an office has, has Windows 11, another one has Windows 10, we want for the person with Windows 10 to kind of nag their boss. I want Windows 11. It looks so pretty. But we don't want to make it, we don't want to do a completely designed from the ground up new operating system because we know that's going to have a lot of troubles for a lot of time. We know that when we make a big change to the operating system, there's a lot of troubles that happen. We got we to gotta do fixes. So the, the improvement needs to be pretty so that people want it. 
but it needs to be minor enough that it's not going to cause a lot of troubles. We need people who are upgrading to Windows 11 to have a smooth, easy experience with it. So that's why kind of it's just a feature update. No big stunning changes, but TPM 2.0 is required so that we can clamp down on rans ransomware and more importantly, in my mind, I'm, I am serious about this, keep it out of the hands or limit the capabilities of terrorists with it. Because when terrorists get their attention focused on this encryption, they're not going to have any morals about what types of organizations they're willing to encrypt. Right now, the ransomware, the under, underworld dark web ransomware providers that sell their software to ransomware affiliates who actually seek to get to infect companies, they, the, the ransomware providers have actually told their affiliates, they have kind of a terms of use user agreement saying you're not allowed to use this against certain types of organizations. And I can't rattle off what they are. And that's been in the news enough. They, they, they published on their, on their website that you're not allowed to infect, uh, I think, government institutions and law enforcement and, and, and health organizations or hospitals, things like that. So they have, they have a little bit of morality about their business model Compared to terrorists, terrorists are they'll, they'll go after nine one one and shut them down. They'll they'll go after the controls, the computer controls of airplanes. They'll shut down air traffic control. They'll they'll shut down major things. It's going to be like crashing airliners into buildings. Seriously, is what terrorists terrorists <laughs> would do with this. So Microsoft and all of the other technology executives and government exec executives or government levels have got to be wanting this, salivating for this, because if we don't implement TPM 2.0, what happens 10 years down the road? And if we do have the terrorist activity with shutting down critical services, and then the executives are called into Congress to answer, yeah, we knew this TPM 2.0 thing. Why didn't you enforce it? Why didn't you enforce it when you had the opportunity to do that? Well, they have the opportunity to do it now, and, and perhaps they should have enforced this a, long, um, a while back, maybe. We might wind up criticizing them for that. <laughs> Seriously, they can't do anything right, right? They know they're going to be criticized no matter what they do. So I think they're in their war room or on their executive retreats knowing that they're going to get highly criticized about how they handle this, and how do we handle that criticism? And, and I think they wind up saying, it doesn't matter. We just have to, we have to do this. We have to get the two, TPM 2.0 out there. We're, Microsoft gets, gets criticized a lot for not telling us what they're going to do or not explaining why they're doing what they're going to do. Okay, they're not good at doing that. The leadership is not good at doing that. Get over it. That's just the way it is. They haven't ever been good at doing that with the current leadership, and they're never going to be. But if they're making the decision to move forward with this and, be, and they're committed to being successful with this, success speaks louder than PR during this process. So if they get us to a safer point where we have less troubles with ransomware and maybe the terrorists never get their hands on this stuff, I'm going to be really happy with them 10 years down the road. So rather than doing other videos on this, I said this is going to be a series of short videos. I guess I went back on my word. This is the end of it. <laughs> I think I've got my thoughts on this out there and uh, let the chips fall where they may. This is what I think the case is. So I hope that's been useful or helpful. Have a great day. Catch you later. Goodbye.